I bid you welcome. I welcome you to my house. Welcome to my house. Welcome to my home. Hello horror hounds, welcome to my horror house. Now we all know everyone enjoys a really good number two. So I thought I would try and squeeze some kind of passable top five list of horror movie part twos out for you. There are gonna be tons of omissions that you will disagree with. I'm sure your own lists will vary wildly from mine. I thought, you know, if I made it a top 10, we'd probably be in broad agreement. If we tried to squeeze it down to a top five though, we could get a conversation going and you could tell me how crazy I am in the comments section below. I'm gonna give you my five, I'm gonna say some honorable mentions, I'm gonna explain why those five are in there. So first in, at number five, Hellbound Hellraiser 2. I genuinely love the way that this sort of expands upon the story we got in Clive Barker's seminal Hellraiser movie. I love the addition of the Dr. Chenard character. I think that what the Julia character gets to do her arc is phenomenally interesting and I can't ever think of her story and just end it at the end of Hellraiser, the first film. Her arc for me does continue. I would have loved to have seen what they'd originally intended to do for the Hellraiser movies to ultimately be about Julia rather than the Cenobites, uh, but we, we never got that. Instead, what we got with this part two is um, a movie that feels like a Hellraiser movie and very few of the many, many, many Hellraiser movies that came uh, after this really felt like a Hellraiser movie. At number four, I'm putting in Scream 2. I think this is a sequel uh, like Saw 2. I was flipping and flopping between Scream 2 and Saw 2. Both of those sequels took a, uh, a basically a contained first part and opened that up into a world of uh, sequel and franchise possibilities. I just think perhaps Scream 2 did it a little slicker and a little better. It managed to keep all of the vital iconography of Scream uh, and Ghostface and the kills but just and also the whodunit element and just give us the notion that each movie we can have a different whodunit and we cannot know whether it's one killer two three or what's going on and it just meant that the franchise could uh, continue without having to have the killers from the original movie bust out of prison or come back from the dead at number three is a part two that I've championed my entire life, A Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two, Freddy's Revenge. Over the years, this is slowly starting to get more and more love and it warms my dark heart to see it so. I love the fact that it's the, the gay, in inverted commas, Nightmare on Elm Street movie. I love the fact that there's subtext to this movie and that it's about something. I love the fact that Freddy Krueger is still a mean son of a bitch in this movie. He looks the scariest he's ever done. Kevin Yeager's Freddy makeup in part two is the best and scariest Freddy has ever looked. I don't have the qualms that even Wes Craven uh, rest in peace had about part two where he said about the teenage party it was wrong to bring Freddy into the real world. It's almost as if he forgot the ending of his own first movie where Freddy, ta-da, comes into the real world. I like the element of possession that's introduced and that Freddy is trying to get back into the real world. And if we're talking about Freddy nonsensically having an influence in the real world, why can't we cock a snoot at the much lauded part three Dream Warriors where characters have a Ray Harryhausen fight in the real world, not while they're asleep, with Freddy Krueger's skeleton. No one talks about that. At number two is a part two that should, on paper, never have been made, should never have been considered, and even more than that, should absolutely never have worked. Who on earth, in their right mind, decides to write and direct a sequel to one of the most lauded films, let alone horror films, of all time? Yeah, I'm just going to have a crack at doing a sequel to Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Yet, and yet, Psycho 2 is a film that stands on its own two feet. Uh, it pulls you in. Uh, there's an X 
excellent reason to tell the story. It's not just more of the same, and it's certainly not what you think it's going to be when you stick in a movie called Psycho 2. And by the end of the movie, it has genuinely earned its right to exist. Against all the odds, Psycho 2 is not only a worthy sequel to Alfred Hitchcock's fantastic masterpiece of a film, it is a great film in its own right. So before I announce my personal number one, we're going to have to talk about some honourable mentions. I really considered Evil Dead 2, but in my own mind, it's just, yes, it's a sequel. Is it a part two? It's part remake? I don't know. Uh, I almost considered Jaws 2 uh, a sequel that I really enjoy and I say ironically to anyone who cares to listen, I actually think Jaws 2 is the second best killer shark movie ever made. I gave real consideration to Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 because uh, it's a different solution to the psycho problem. What do you do with a, a, an iconic game changing first movie? How would you do a sequel to it? This time, at least the original creator, Toby Hooper, was returning. Uh, he chose a different option to Tom Holland with Psycho 2, and what he decided to do was to say, well, everything that the first film uh, is, this second film won't be. Uh, th this film will be gory, it will be broad, it will be satirical, it will be kind of a dark comedy. Everything that was sort of subtext in the first film will make text in the second film. I adore it. I did seriously consider including Friday the 13th part two and decided that the only reason I was genuinely seriously considering it was because uh, I think it's the only time uh, for me Jason is, is seriously scary and it's also got the, the, the greatest final girl, survivor, what you want to call that sort of character type, I think in the whole of the slasher genre, apart from maybe uh, Nev Campbell in, in uh, the Scream series, but that wasn't quite enough to push Friday the 13th Part 2 over the edge and get it into my top five. I also really desperately struggled with whether or not to include something like <clears throat> Bride of Frankenstein and Maybe ultimately, unfairly, I, I left it off the list just because it didn't have part two in, in the title. And the same for Dracula's Daughter, um, uh, a sequel to Universal's 1931 Dracula, which is a phenomenal film in its own right, which doesn't get enough props and doesn't get enough light shined on it. Something that took an iconic horror movie and tried to do something completely different for the sequel, which I lauded it for. And um, I will tell people to watch Dracula's Daughter uh, all day long and yet won't include it in my top five part twos because there's no part two in the title. Instead, uh, for my number one spot, what I have chosen is a, a, a film that, again, you'll see a recurring theme here. So it's taken a fairly passable first part and then done something completely different. It's Amityville 2, The Possession. It's uh, like chalk and cheese to the Amityville Horror. The Amityville Horror is the ultimate American haunted house story. And the Amityville Horror, the original movie, is, is, is kind of like the template for the all-American uh, ghost story. I mean, it's become iconic, supposedly based on a true story. It's not. It doesn't matter. The iconography of what was uh, created, even though it's only a few decades old, the story since its conception, Everyone understands the Amityville Horror, those uh, quarter moon windows, uh, the Dutch colonial mansion, the singy-songy children's score, the, uh, the father growing a shaggy beard and cutting wood with an axe. Everyone understands what it's all about. And then to take a sequel and create something as exploitative and sleazy and queasy, I've rarely seen a nasty horror movie, a movie that just, well, it doesn't necessarily scare you, but it just makes you feel dirty and uncomfortable and just, oh, the sequel we never knew we needed, uh, the, the ultimate sort of uh, marriage of, of exploitation movie and uh, American franchise sequelitis. Amateurville 2, The Possession, I salute you.